everybody for coming. Uh, I, I I love to see I love to see the faces on Zoom. I know it's hard. Um, it's harder sometimes than in person, but actually for a class like this, it's really wonderful because I can share my screen. I can actually show you demos. And when when I taught uh, face to face and I did it on a TV, everybody vied for the close seats. So this way, everybody gets the same seat. So this is great. So yeah, like Ali said, I've had quite a background. Um, I was a lawyer for 30 years and then I retired. I, I was a condominium lawyer and I wrote, I'm a writer too. So I wrote books and publications and helped people. And then I cut the cord on that a couple of years ago and I had already semi-retired and started taking a lot of workshops and classes. So I'm kind of a workshop junkie um, and I've done all kinds of painting. I just, I wanted as wide a background as I could do but I'm finally honed in on the digital and I love it. I love teaching it and um, people have fun. They, they really have a lot of fun when they find out they can create without, without a lot of major skills. So I'm happy to go out there and learn everything I can learn and then bring it to my classrooms. So um, what I, I'm gonna, is there anything else, Allie, before I, what I'm gonna do, I guess I'll tell you a little bit first about the class. It's a beginner class and a lot of people don't know very much about their phones. In fact, you know, they can talk on them, but the phones aren't even best for that anymore. <laughs> they're, they're better for cameras than anything else. So the thing I love about the art, the iPhone is that you can, uh, it's portable. You have it with you always. So you can always do photography and always do art and always be creating. So I teach people how to organize their phone, organize their files, organize their albums. I teach them how to make notes in notes and do screenshots and make comments on their uh, notes from classes and things right on the images so that they have everything together. <laughs> and then um, I teach them uh, photographic elements, composition, lighting. Uh, I had 30 years of photography that offset my stresses of practicing law. And I went to Photoshop World probably 10 years and I went to uh, photographic workshops in Santa Fe over 10 years. And so, um, so I teach people photographic elements too, because the best foundation for your art on the device is a good photograph. If you start with a good photograph, you have to do less work. And that's kind of the mantra for uh, photographers who've used Photoshop and different things. It's the better the photograph, the better outcome's gonna be and the less stress for you. So, um, so uh, then I teach them about their phones and then I show them demonstrations. Um, I've worked on my own. I've been teaching for uh, five years now, the four or five years that in, cl in class. And I just started doing online in January. I was kind of waiting for the right time. And of course that was presented. But I take people into the classroom and, and then one week we will uh, have an assignment and go over the people's images. And then the next week I'll do a demo. So we kind of switch back and forth so they, they get demo time and they also get to see what everybody else is doing. And uh, it's very, it's a very stimulating kind of environment for, for um, brainstorming solutions. And other people think of things to do that I didn't do. And there's just not enough hours in a day to do everything. So everybody learns from everybody else too. So anyway, um, I'm gonna go on in if it's okay. Ali, are there any questions before I go into screen share? No, we're ready. We're excited. Oh, good. Okay. so. Um, I'm going to open up my other device <clears throat> uh, and I'm going to share with all of you. You'll have to uh, watch a little bit of, oh, you know what, I'm, am I not supposed to be recording this? Am I, I hope I'm not, I'm not versed well with recording yet, but I'm not supposed to be recording this, am I, Ali? You can, you can. I'm, I'm recording, I'm recording it. So if you want a copy, I will share it with you. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, do that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just need to, I need to spotlight your screen, so. Okay. I just gotta find it. It looks like, or it's still loading up, it's, I, I see black. Yeah, I'm not sure, um, that's not happened before, so let's, let's figure out what's going on. Maybe I need to stop it and start again. Uh, maybe the spotlighting is affecting it. Oh, maybe, um, maybe I should unspotlight you, hold on. Yeah spotlight and I'm going to go out and come back in because I think what's happening is um, my screen will come up for everybody to see anyway. I don't think it needs to be spotlighted because I'm sharing my screen with everybody so they'll see. So I'm going to stop sharing and then I'm going to start it again and okay. I think that will take care of the problem. This okay. is uh, uh, everybody we're all we're all in this together <laughs> learning how to do it. So, um, There we okay. go. We're good. Good. Hold okay. Hold on a second. Let me just let me spotlight the shared screen so everybody can see it. Um, okay. Can everybody see 
it says demo at the top pal uh, demo uh yes hold on just want to yeah i guess yeah, the question we have is... such a large group i have to find the the demo screen. yeah okay yeah so if there's anybody who can't see too you, you can ask that question instead of who can because hopefully everybody can yeah if, if so if you can't see just write no in the chat please thank you can you see Allie? I, I can see, yes. Okay, so here I am in my PAL demo um, album that I set up on my phone. And what I wanted to do is just take you through the kind of things that people can learn. And people don't have to be artists. They don't have to be iPhone specialists. They don't have to be anything when they come to my class. You know, they just have to be ready for some fun. So, so I might take an image like this that I've taken outside. You can see there's spots in it. There are other people in it. And I'll show them how to segregate, spice up the image a little bit, um, do some things in Snapseed, and then add words on it. So that's just something very simple that a person can do that's very new at this. I'll teach people how to take better photographs. And I'll tell you right now that Zoom does, is not known for its sharpness of focus on the screen. But this is a, I teach people how to get sharp images and how to increase, increase the contrast to make them look sharper. So that's the photography aspect. I teach them how to put frames on things when they get a finished uh, work. I teach them how to do, um, this is a live photo with the iPhone. I teach them how to make, um, I don't, uh, maybe this one won't, okay. oh, here we go. Yeah, I teach them how to make, do a bounce photo out of a live photo so that they have a little video. Um, this is from the, the MDAC course. I, uh, we had a figure drawing class, so I did this drawing on the iPad, these simple drawings. Course, you know, I'm one of those people that it's never enough to um, to just leave what you have and and run with it. I always like to add things because I have the different capabilities. So I went to the uh, internet and I found some music that I like because that picture meant dance to me. I put it through Waterlog, which is one of the apps I teach, and then I combined the drawing with the with the musical notes and uh, did a black and white version. Then I went back to the color because I liked it better. And this is what I ended up with. So I yeah, teach people how to, I call it smooshing images together and then add words on them. And then, um, so that all can be done in Snapseed. I teach waterlogs, Snapseed and retouch. Mm -hmm. This is a picture of, uh, I just was at the gallery one day bored and, and I took some old, made this collage out of them. And then I took a picture with my iPhone because I can never get enough brightness out of my artwork, but when I take a picture on the iPhone and then I can work with it in the apps. And so I did some texture on it and I did some different coloring on it. So with one piece of art, I ended up with even many more projects. I was asked to do some um, local book covers for an anthology that's coming out. So this is putting together a plain sculpture of a bird with a background and putting letter on it. The same thing here, put it, I put three images together on this. Um, uh, this is another one of a uh, photograph. These are all photographs, by the way, except for those dancers that I showed you that was a drawing. Every one of these comes from a photograph. This is uh, an example of putting images together, silhouettes from the beach, uh, putting on textures, finding textures that work with the simple images of the people. This is another one. I'm working on this for another cover. Um, it's a silhouette from a little girl dancing at the beach, incorporating a, a typewriter and then some texture. This is a was a color photograph, and I show people how to get how to get the really stark black and white images out of. Uh, you don't have to take a black and white. You can take a color and make it into something pretty interesting. This is a technique. Um, this picture isn't, of course, you know, a great picture, but it. This is an example of how I teach people, you know, you several tries you might need to get it, but with your panorama setting on your camera, you can end up with something like this just by tilting your camera as you're walking along the thing. And then you can see this has some black in it. I teach them in retouch how to go back and fill this in because there's a clone tool in retouch that a lot of people don't know about. And then I took it back into Snapseed and made it uh, colorful. So this is a shooting technique that I teach and then you layer all the stuff you know about the apps on top of it and you can come up with something pretty interesting. This is a store window, which I love. A lot of people won't take pictures in store windows because, because they have so much stuff going on in them. And people say, I can't get a sharp picture. Well, 
I'm not into sharp pictures at all. I'm into putting things together to make art. So it doesn't matter to me. So this is a picture I started with. This is uh, adding a texture to it, a building texture. And I took out, you can see I took out one of a kind that was on the window. I did that retouch. And then um, I ended up putting a, 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 a texture. I make my own texture files and teach people how to do that too. I have a whole album on textures. I have everybody that's taken my classes is out taking pictures of sidewalks and buildings and all kinds of things. Um, and then this is a, a finished product of one of the windows that I'm, talk, that I'm talking about that you can come up with that you can do after you do some apps and things. This is actually a model that was very boring in a, in a black dress, but it, it turned into a painting, when, you know, working with it. Here's a, here's a few more. You can see that, see the, um, in this one, see the woman with her hands out. I segregated that one and did a drawing. You can see the second from the top uh, left. You can see that's a dance. That's a dancer pose. And I did that by segregating her and then uh, adding some textures and doing some colorizing. The same with the other three on the right side. They're all mannequins and windows uh, that you can make artistic photos out of. This is a combination of two portrait images, actually three. <clears throat> one of them is the guy, the guy with the hat. One of them is him looking out the window, and the other on the bottom left is his hand on a piano. Um, so these are kinds of things that beginners can learn how to do by smooshing images in Snapseed. This is a water bottle, and I, you know, that that says um, normal people scare me. Uh, it's somebody texting, so you can, you know, do all kinds of interesting things with even a, a simple bottle texture. Um, and this is, what this is, is, uh, uh, well, I, let's talk, I'll be talking about that later. It got out of order. These are three images that um, students did, that beginner students, they didn't have any skills, came in and learned how to do water log and then some, some things in the Snapseed app. And this is the difference in the photos. They came out, they all came out with different renderings, which was so much fun. And then um, this is one I did, and you can see I added, but with uh, the retouch, I mean, with the retouch um, clone tool, I actually added another uh, rose to it. So I teach people how to do that. This is another beach shot. And I took the beach shots and incorporated them into some covers. This is a cover for my book that's coming out soon, The, the um, Great Grandpa Chronicles. Uh, so I combined images, I combined words, textures, and then I slipped in that picture of my family, young, our young family. This is another beat example of a beat shot, that little girl that's walking. I isolated her with the black and white and then put her on the typewriter keys. Um, you can do, this is another one of those um, shots. I'm going too fast with a computer, how about that? This is a shot that's taken in live photo on your iPhone and then made into, you can do a bounce or you can do um, a loop or a bounce or you can blur it. So this is a shot that, you know, it's just taken with the iPhone that is a moving shot, but it's a one second exposure. Here's another example of, I teach people um, composition and photography, trying to get the best composition, trying to get something interesting, not rather than the kind of shots everybody else takes. So this is the bud. And then this is, uh, there's some things done in Snapseed to brighten it up. Um, this is, and here's where I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to do a demo in a minute. But this is a, this is a shot taken with the portrait mode. Anybody who has Androids, the problem with using an Android in my class is you don't have the same modalities, and you can't uh, well, you can't get waterlog. I don't even know if you can get retouch. You can get Snapseed, and I am um, trying to put together a class for Android users with Snapseed. But I can only take people in that class if they really know their phones and don't look to me to get them out of bind. So that's why I call it an iPhone class. This is portrait mode. This is uh, portrait mode on steroids using iColorama, which I also teach a more advanced, I'll get into more, more uh, advanced lessons as if, I, if there's enough interest for this class. Um, here's another portrait mode shot and you can edit a portrait mode and that's how I came up with the one in my ad, I think on the PAL site. You can do so many things with one little image. Uh, so I'm going through these kind of fast. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, Ali, are you uh, seeing no. any questions? So this is the final product on that one. Um, it's one one image done with uh, about you know eight different ways and then put into a collage with some words on it. 
Uh, I teach people how to put their signature on too. You can see I have my signature on here on the bottom right. Uh, here's another portrait image. This is the one I'm gonna do with a demo with today. What I did, what I did with this image is um, I duplicated it. And the way I would, I'll just go there. Uh, well, before I go there, I'll actually go through the other ones. I made various versions of it to smoosh them together. So here I'm gonna start the demo now and I'll um, try to do it so, uh, so you know, you can keep up. So I see there's a question there. Go ahead and you can go ahead and ask it. Yeah, uh, I, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. So can, will this work on a tablet? I'm assuming if it's um, like an iPad. Oh, I'm, yes. I'm on a tablet. I'm on a tablet for the Zoom meeting and I'm on a tablet for the share screen. Yes. But you're on so an you iPad, correct? I'm on iPads, yeah. I have a 12.9 um, iPad Pro that I have the Zoom meeting going on, and then I'm working on an iPad Air of uh, two version. It, the people that come into my class, if you have an iPhone 6 or better, it's it works better. The fives and below are missing a lot of um, things, and people just get jealous by the time they leave the class. They want to go out and buy an iPhone 11. I use an 11 Pro Max myself. Um, but the iPads, you know, some people have gotten on old iPads and they've been able to navigate around. This this iPad here that I'm doing the demo on is probably six years old. So you don't have to have a brand new iPad. And I always recommend being with your camera because your camera is a better camera. But you can, with the iPads, you can obviously, you're, you know, when you get home, things sync up and you get it on your iPad or you can airdrop it. And I teach people how to airdrop things too. And then some people work on their PCs when they get home. And I teach people how to get their how to get their images from their iPhone to their PC. I talk about that too. So I have this image up here right now. And up in the upper right hand, um, there's a box with an arrow in it. I call that the options box. Well, I'm not gonna go there yet. Well, I am gonna go there first because if I'm gonna work with three different versions of one image, I have to duplicate it. So I'm gonna hit that box with the arrow on it. And then I'm gonna uh, click on duplicate, which I slide down to get. And uh, so now I've duplicated that image. So I'm gonna have uh, two images of that, but I'll tell you right now, the other image went to the camera roll. I'm in an album right now. And finding images is another thing that I teach because it gets confusing, but now I've duplicated that. So I have extra images to work with. So here in portrait mode, this is, I'm um, clicked on edit in the iPhone editing. And a lot of people don't know this. <clears throat> you can shoot the portrait mode in, uh, with different, um, different choices. This happens to be studio light, but I can, or stage light. You can see down in the lower, I have my finger on that little box right now. And I can slide it around and I can go to stage light mono. I could even go to high key mono. And I usually shoot in one of these modes because there's a circle in your camera that tells you what's going to be highlighted when you shoot. So, and then I come back into, you know, when I come back into the uh, home, then I fix the picture up the way I want, put it in the light I want. So you can see I'm getting different choices here. And that's how I, I end up with different choices to work with. That's how I might end up with a black and white or a stage light mono to work with. So um, here I, I'll save something I don't think I've saved yet. Um, I don't think I've saved this black and white. So now, uh, see, because I have two of these images, I can save this one. If I didn't have, if I hadn't duplicated, I would be altering my original. And in iPhone, you can always go back and do a revert and get rid of all your original changes. But if you want different versions, it's better to duplicate and then work on the different versions. So now I'm gonna click on done here. Um, and, and, and I'm saving it now. I'm saving this version of this one, which will be on my camera roll. It won't be in the album. Oh, it, it did come up in the PAL demo. Oh, I know why it came up in the PAL demo album, because I worked on the one that was in the album. But again, I, I help people figure out how to find photos and how to move them from album to album. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, um, and I'm going to take, let's see, I'm gonna take this original photo again. And uh, let's see, I made one, of, on it. I'm gonna take this one that I made a, this light out of, because this is one that I can smoosh an image together and you'll actually see it. If I did the one that was all black, you wouldn't be able to. So I'm gonna click that options box again with the arrow in it. And then I'm gonna copy this time because I'm gonna take it into Snapseed. 
you can get into Snapseed two different ways. I have to go out of there and then now I have to open up Snapseed. You can see I have a, a few apps, um, you know, and, and that's <laughs> just on this. Island. But um, I, so I'm going to go into Snapseed, which is that one with the leaf on it and um, take Snapseed. Okay, here's one I worked on earlier when I was getting this demo set up. So whatever you were working on before is there and you can go back and work on it until you save it. And there are different save modes where you can save with layers and things, but that's that's also getting into sort of an intermediate, intermediate discussion. I'm gonna open a new image and start over again. So I click on open and you know I click on it again and again. And if I get impatient, I just have to take a drink of coffee or something because it takes a minute. So, and, and I have 111,000 photos on my cloud. So I always think that might have something to do with it. But in a minute, it will come up and it will allow me to paste that picture in. You can see now I can paste. The other way I could do this is go straight to Snapseed and then open from device to find a picture. But I, the reason I have people copy the pictures and put it in here is a lot of times they've gone back, you know, a year and they found a photo they want to work with and they locate it and they go back to Snapseed and then they uh, can't find it <laughs> because you can't find anything in the albums on Snapseed very easily unless they're recent. So I have them copy. I'm going to paste it in here and you can see now that I have this uh, colored image that, I, that I'm going to work with. Um, did a question come up, Allie? I'm happy to... If there was take. just a question about um, the resolution on taking a photo on a tablet versus the iPhone. And basically what I understand is that the iPhone, the, the, the lens and the quality is better than a tablet, though a tablet is still very good. A tablet, you can take pictures on tablets, but, uh, but Allie's right, you won't get, I don't know what the, uh, the size of the picture is, but it, the, in terms of pixels and things, it doesn't really matter because they, the iPads don't have the specialized lenses, uh, you know, and they're not in tune. So, and, they, and you also can't position them the same you can't get them underneath the flower or, or you can't reach behind something. You know, with the iPhone, it's just so convenient to take a picture from any angle. So a lot of people use their iPads and I wouldn't discourage that, but I would, if you have a phone, I would encourage that you use the phone to take the picture. You'll, you'll get a much better picture and you can hold it steadier too. I mean, you know, it's hard to hold the iPhone, iPad steady. So anyway, so I put this in here and now I'm gonna, I'm gonna brighten this up a little bit and I'm going to go through, there are various filters here. I could, uh, pop is usually one that brightens up things a little bit, but here it darkens it. I don't really like it. Um, I could use the faded glow. That brightens it up a little too much for me. I mean, that that's the morning. Um, I don't really like any of these filters with this picture. So I'm going to hit the X and I'm going to go, instead of that rainbow, which is looks, I'm going to go to the tools, which is that pen. And I'm going to go right to the tuning up in the upper left-hand corner. Um, this again is a little bit more advanced, and but I teach it in the beginner class. But it's it's doing your own tuning, and so that takes some playing around to get things the way you want them. But I've done it, of course, a thousand times. So uh, these are the adjustments I have in the tuning. But I'm just basically going to brighten up this shot a little bit because I'm going to mix it with something. And when you mix with something, uh, everything you know. It, Every layer that you add, adds some darkness. So you really want a good light image to work with. When you increase highlights and then you decrease shadows, which is what I'm doing here, you'll get more, it'll be look like it's sharper. See how much sharper it looks? Uh, this is the before, this is the after. <clears throat> and so I'm gonna just check this. I'm gonna hit the check mark on this because I'm, I'm happy with it, happy enough because I've got enough detail, I've got enough sharpness to mix with another image and I won't lose a lot. So I'm gonna hit the check mark down in the lower right hand corner and that will save this. Now it doesn't save it until I hit the check mark. Now I'm gonna go back into the tools, which is that pen, and I'm gonna do a double exposure, uh, which is at the bottom. If you're on your iPhone, you have to scroll up because some of the, the um, let's go back there. We did that kind of quickly at the tools. The ones that are on the bottom, vignette, double exposure, text, and frames won't show up on your iPhone. You have to scroll down to find them. So I'm going to hit the double exposure. I'm going to go back to that black and white image. That um, not I don't want the I don't want the uh, 
I see it in recents here. Um, I don't want the the black, I don't want this black and white one that's down in the lower right hand corner. So I'm gonna have to find the PAL album. And I'll tell you, every single app that you have is going to reorder your, um, your, your uh, albums. So, and I show people how to move them around. So they're at the top, like mine are at the top in my photo stream, album stream, but they're not at the top in Snapseed because they put them wherever the heck they want to. So sometimes I have to dig up. Beth, remind me, yep. you're on Snapseed, right? You're on Snapseed now, correct? Yep. Snapseed, right? And I'm on the, I'm in the tools, and I'm in the double exposure option, and I'm going to look for a picture to add to this one to, to do a double exposure. I'm going to go back to the PAL demo folder because that's where I did, um, I did this, uh, this light. Did you see the light colored one? Uh, maybe I show that again. Oh well, it shows here. Um, let's see, I don't want that one. I'm going to go to double exposure because that's the finish. That's more the finished product, which is interesting. Uh, I'm going to go back and find the PAL folder, the, the PAL demo folder again, because that's where I think I had the black and white, uh, the plain black and white one. Um, I think it's this one here. Oh, I know why. I, so I've tapped on that black and white, the lighter one I did, that mono high key one. Now they're, they're together. Um, it, it didn't download it yet. Let's see here. Give it a minute. Um, okay. What happened is um, I let's see if I if I saved it on here. Hang on a second because I'm trying. What I'm trying to do is find the one that doesn't have pink in it to show you that it will it will render pink by um, doing the doing the blending, but, um, oh, well, I know what's happening. It's rendering pink because <laughs> sometimes I get ahead of myself. So I, this is has another image on top of that color image. Now it has the black and white on top. The reason it's showing pink is if I click on the upside down book that says styles, there are six different blend modes in Snapseed. If I click on default, now I'm going, I'm closer to the original image. If I click on the whole other side on overlay, I'm closer to the overlaid image, but it doesn't blend well with the one that I put in there, which is in black and white. But if I hit lighten, it's going to bring in some different color from that image. It's going to go look in this image. It's interesting because we never know what's going to come up in the blend modes, but it's going to um, look completely different. It's going to have a pinkish cast to it. The greens have a different, they have a gray green cast to them. If I click on darken, then I'm getting, um, maybe you can see better this way. Let's, I'm in default right now. And if I click on transparency, you can see that that's the top image. Um, now I have the top image all transparent. I'm gonna go back to the middle and then I'm gonna go back to style and I'm gonna hit on lighten and see what happens. Uh, I can even get rid of, some of the background right now is showing texture. If I change the transparency, I can uh, up the transparency of the, the overlaid image. I can get rid of that detail in the back. So this is why there's no set list of rest, uh, rules to do. You just play with each setting until you like it. This happened to be the one I liked the best. I didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't like the ad. I liked, didn't like the dark and I liked the light. That was the one I liked the best. And I liked the one without, um, you know, I liked the one without the texture in the background, although that would be, okay too but i like i like this this one here so i'm going to hit the check mark and save that and now i'm going to just go ahead and add uh, something on there with text so i'm going to my tools you can see i at that pencil i'm going to add a text box i have to double i i can move the text box with my finger um i'm going to change it first i have to double tap on it and then it highlights and i'll hit the backspace key and then Tap in there a rose. Okay, so and I'm going to click on that. Now I have a rose as a rose. You can see on that if you're doing your text and it's on the same color, you won't see it. So I'm going to just touch it with my finger and I'm going to bring it down below. You can't see it at all, but I'm going to click on color 
I'm gonna find the color I like the best, but this is too light. You can see that that color is too light. So I'm gonna go down to the other end. I'm, I have a choice, lots of choices for colors, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try one of these. This is more towards the, what I like, but if I like, if the other one was too bright, I could change the transparency on the words too, so you can make make words blend in with the image. So um, I'm gonna just go ahead. I like that. I would. I can. I can show you. I can take it into uh, iPhone editing and show you how to sign it, or I can. I'm gonna save it. That that uh, options box with the arrow gives me the chance to export. In my class, I'll explain what all the other things do, but I tell everybody not to use them because you'll lose your picture forever. So I'm gonna export it to my photo roll. And then um, I can show you how to add a signature or I can stop now. Uh, what's the time? What's the consensus here? Uh, it's 11.04. <laughs> yeah, so it's time to stop, I think. You well, think? I, I feel like it can go on for several hours. It seems like there's a lot to learn, a lot you can do and play with and um, yeah. So you'll never I, get bored. Yes, you never get bored. What type of stylus do you use? Um, I, I rarely use a stylus, but I have some here um, that I can maybe hold up and share as soon as I get my screen back here. Let's uh, get back to Zoom. Okay, here we go. Um, I use Miko, M-E-K-O, most of the time. And I like their styluses because they have, well, here's an example of a, a stylus. Let's see if, uh, since I have a virtual background, um, where is that camera? Uh, yeah, it's uh, maybe bring it a little bit to your, Okay, so I that on the end of a pen, a lot of the times you'll find those on the end of a pen, that'll work well. Some people use their fingernails. Um, I'll see if I can find another one here. Miko has, um, this is one that I got that has something on both ends. It has a fat one on one end and it has a, a skinnier one on the other end. Uh, and then inside it has a pen. I The Miko ones have a little, they're they're more they're finer. They have a, a circular tip that that uh, goes around the tip of the pen, and you so they they are they're if you want to do something really more intricate, you can use it. But a lot of people in my classes have just used their fingernail. I mean, not sharp, you know, not a sharp fingernail yeah. or those other kind of styluses to write their name. And again, Miko M E K O is my favorite kind on Amazon. There's, there's various selections and they're not expensive so I, I recommend people to get a stylus but most people like me find that you just you get going and you know you don't want to stop and pull out your stylus so you until you're ready to sign um you know if i once you get to the iphone signing process you can do your markup in the iphone editing and you can put various signatures in and then you can just click on a signature each time and have the same one or a different one so yeah so it's nice to know too that you don't. It's nice to know too that you don't have to use the iPhone, the iPad stylus, even that white pen. Um, oh yeah, I, uh, I have the Apple Pen too, which I like for drawing, but I never, you know, you have to keep it charged, and I always forget to charge it. So the other styluses work when you don't have it charged. Exactly. Apple pen. Huh? Yeah. Um, so there were some questions. Um, so your class starts July twentieth. It's for six weeks, and it's from ten thirty a.m. to twelve p.m. Registration is now open on the Pacific Art League website. You can find it under classes in digital art. Uh, so for those of you jumping off, um, I just wanted to give you that information. I guess we have time maybe for one or two more questions. If anyone has any questions for the chat, I can ask Beth. Yeah, I'll say I've had a focus group going since uh, February because I wanted to learn how to teach on Zoom. So they've taught me as much as I've taught them and I have nine people that are advanced enough enough now to go into iColorama and we like I said we share things in the Google classroom I don't know how sharing in the PAL classroom works if there is one but I will be following up on that I will have a classroom where people can put their work in so you prefer on. you prefer a Google classroom I just know how to use Google classroom I, I, if, if PAL had a preference that I use your facility your choice I would I just have to learn it yeah I think it's a you know it's by instructor, but that's something I can regroup with Linda on and get back to you. 
Uh, so okay. a question that says, Beth, do you use the iPhone camera app itself for adjusting your images before doing more work on them or, or in the other apps? Um, I, in the class, I talk about that. There's lots of options now, depending on what iPhone you have. The iPhone 11s have, and 10, I think, have amazing, have added amazing capabilities in their editing. But the problem with the iPhone editing is you lose some resolution. It alters your photo and you lose size, uh, which is important if you're going to get something printed. Snapseed doesn't, if you save your Snapseeds uh, in a PNG or a TIFF, if you set it up to save it in a different resolution, you don't get the compression that you do. So I do, uh, I try to avoid editing an iPhone unless I'm really just trying quickly to get something up on Facebook and then, you know, there's all the tools are there. So, um, but I also always duplicate my images. So I have a full resolution image to work with. Actually, here's a question. It's funny, my husband and I just over the weekend were talking about, I was telling him that I wanted an iPhone 11 just for the camera. And he tried to convince me that there's point and clicks now that have the same, that can take photos like iPhones. And I was like, but I want, all, all I want is portrait mode. <laughs> so are there yeah. point cameras that have the same quality as an iPhone camera? Well, I think I've always thought Samsung and Android phones, I used to have one. I thought the camera, quality was better but i don't think that anymore and i because of the um ease of use and the number of apps that are that are have been created for iphones i'm total i'm a total iphone user now um you know I, i've switched but i do i think the samsung cameras are good my daughter-in-law has one or android and she takes gorgeous photos but she can't do anything with them interesting so that's a problem yeah you must uh are you constantly trying out new apps? Yeah, I do. I, I, I have a guru that I take a three day intensive every year and I try to stick to apps that he's tested because he's a technical guru and some of the apps, you know, are risky. A lot of them really deteriorate. They, they really wreck their files. They really, uh, like graphite is a good example of one. They, they, you know, they really, um, ruin the quality of your files and you have to go back and fix and fill in and so uh, I like graphite but I, I recognize you know that I can't uh, keep a good a good image size in that because I don't have the option to save in a in a non-compressed you know not a uh, lossy less or whatever file so yeah so I'd be careful I only teach three because I know they're they're good apps and quality and they haven't caused anybody any but I, I very, I venture out into four, three or four different ones and show people things. And I have 20 some on my phone that I've used, but I've got my favorites and they can do a lot of what I want to do. So I kind of stick with them.